Obviously, nuclear is making a huge comeback. And how can you play the space? I've got my four favorite plays, and I own all four of them. And I'm going to talk about them in range from most conservative to most aggressive when it comes to playing uranium going forward. The uranium sector is incredibly volatile. So if you can't stomach volatility, none of these plays might be right for you. Even the least volatile of the four that I'm going to talk about is still extremely volatile. But let's start with it anyway. This is the Global X Uranium ETF with the ticker symbol URA. One of the major reasons I like this ETF is it makes it simple. If you don't want to learn about each of the individual players in the space, you don't have to. Global X has gone out and selected a number of different players in the space and it has created this ETF so that you can just invest in one product and get exposure to the entire sector. However, like I said, it is incredibly volatile. And if you just go back to May of 2024 and down to the bottom of August 5th, you can see it pulled back 32.31% just from that high. And recently, when you look at its rally from early September to where it is now, it's rallied 30% off of that low. That's dramatic. When you're talking about the S&P 500 returning an average of about 8% per year, having an asset do this in just a couple of months, both on the way down and on the way up, can be really nausea-inducing. However, I do like this sector and I do like this asset. So if I was going to get into the space, what I would probably do is use a combination of Fibonacci retracement and support levels to figure out where I might get in. If I was feeling particularly aggressive, I might start with a 50% allocation when the market was open again and just get half of the overall position that I wanted right away. But then I'd save the remaining 50% to buy in either 5 or 10% increments if uranium pulls back. You can see that the Fibonacci retracement gives us a bunch of key levels that could have support. If we go back in the past, you can see that $28 was right around the 23.6% retracement level from where we were at the beginning of September to the high that we just made at the end of September. After that, I'd go back to the 50% retracement. You can see that we found support here at $26.10, and we just keep repeating the process, finding levels of support that we might want to add to if the uranium ETF ever pulled back that far. Even if you use 10% buys at each of the levels that we've outlined here, you'd still have 10% cash remaining. Now, I don't think the URA ETF will sell off as much as this, much less selling off below $20. However, anything's possible. As we head into the presidential election in November, it's quite possible we'll see a lot of volatility between then and now. So keeping some dry powder on the sidelines isn't a bad approach, and that's what I typically do. However, I'm also comfortable in often not getting a full allocation and just having to say what I have is what I have and just letting it ride. Next up is my second second favorite play that is also conservative the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. Sprott is a Canadian-based company and has a number of different trusts. In addition to uranium, they also have the Gold Physical Trust. And what they do is they go out and buy the actual physical asset and they have it one for one. So it tends to be a better correlation than anything else in the market. However, where Sprott's Physical Gold Trust is traded in the New York Stock Exchange, the Uranium Trust is only traded in Canada. So if you're American, it depends on your broker whether you'll even be able to buy this. And if you have a broker like Schwab, you might have to pay a small commission every time you buy or sell it. So it's worth keeping that in mind. And that's one of the reasons that I don't outrank Uranium's ETF URA with this. I do like this because it's direct exposure to the commodity. The ticker symbol is S-R-U-U-F. And like I said, Schwab does allow you to buy it with a commission. Although I have noticed that both Vanguard and Robinhood don't even allow you to buy it in any form. Just like the Global X ETF, you can see that uranium has pulled back pretty substantially. Now you'll notice it only pulled back 30.19% from its high to the low on August 5th whereas the URA ETF actually pulled back nearly a third. So it is slightly less volatile, but you're still talking about a 30% drawdown. And from our lows at the beginning of September, you can see that it's rallied 21.33%. And again, the URA ETF rallied more than that, but that means it's got more volatility both on the upside and the downside. So you have to know that going in. Just like URA, I would use a Fibonacci retracement to determine levels and then just go back in the past and figure out where I'd want to add at. 
finding different places where the asset could find support as it sells off, and then making my decision of where I want to buy and how much I'd want to put to work at each of those levels. So now let's say you don't want exposure to the ETF and you don't want to buy the commodity. Instead, you'd prefer to have one of the individual players and go with one of the best in breed. And in this case, it's Cameco with the ticker symbol CCJ. When we look at how much it pulled back from its high down to its low on August 5th, you can see it pulled back more than both the commodity SRUUF and the Global X ETF, dropping a total of 37% to its August 5th low. However, from its low at the beginning of September, you can see that it rallied a really substantial 37.31%. So the more micro you go, the more oomph you're going to see in both directions. Once again, we'll draw a Fibonacci retracement and see what kind of levels it gives us. You can see that we see support around here. I'd actually raise this one to match these lines over here because it's highly likely that it will find support above this day. After that, I just do what I have done and work my way down to add more buying points and figure out how much cash I'd like to have on the sidelines, this dry powder, or how much I'd like to be in into this position going forward. Another nice part about both the ETF and Cameco is that both actually have a dividend yield, where naturally owning the commodity means you get no dividend. However, you do have to be able to stomach the extra volatility that you see in these assets. Now let's talk about the most volatile of the uranium plays that I personally own, the Sprott Junior Uranium Miners ETF with the ticker symbol URNJ. I have absolutely no interest in doing enough research on all the junior uranium miners to figure out which ones would be the best in breed. Plus, this space is incredibly volatile because any of these miners could screw up and go out of business at any moment. So I want the power that comes with diversification to make it so that I am not as exposed as if I just picked the wrong company. From its high to the August 5th low, you can see that the URNJ pulled back 45.46%, and it pulled back even further when it came to the beginning of September, pulling back a total of more than 48% from its recent high to where it ended up. When we look at how much it's rallied from its September low, you can see it rallied more than any of the other three assets, going up 43.69% from the low at the beginning of September. Once again, if we wanted to create a buying plan, I'd start with a Fibonacci retracement to give me general ideas ideas of levels, and then I'd go back in the past and find key levels of support that seem to tie into the levels that we get from the Fibonacci retracement. This would give me the start of a buying plan, but you have to remember this asset is particularly new. It only came live back on February 2nd of 2023, which means we don't have as much price action. I can tell you that the all-time low was here in March of 2023 at $13.66, but there are no promises that low would hold in the event of a dramatic pullback. Like I said earlier, I do believe that the uranium space is going to be a solid play into the future. However, it's important to remember the possible black swan events that could affect this space. If we saw a nuclear reactor meltdown or the use of a nuke in live combat, that would make many people not want to invest in the space, even though no, this is one of the safest energy sectors that exists. My personal approach is to own a basket of all four of these assets. That way I have some exposure to the most conservative investment and the most aggressive at the same time. To learn more, check out my blog at geturk.substack.com.